All right, welcome everyone. I'm Rajneesh Gupta, and with me I have Jevin Patak. This is our mock interview series, and uh, yeah. So as you know the process, Jevin will be asking me questions. I'll be answering them. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe the channel. If you are an existing subscriber, make sure you press the bell icon so that you get notified the moment we publish a new video. All right. So without taking much time, let's get started. So hi, how are you, Jevin? I'm good, Rajesh. How are you? Good, good, good. Thank you so much, Jamin, for for having me here. You're welcome. So let's get started. Rajesh, sure. I have a question on defenses, defense in depth. Do you know about it? What is de defense in depth? Yeah, I I know about it. Yes. Okay. So what is it, and why it is important? Well, uh, defense in depth is is basically a strategy. It's it's a basically a strategy, or you can we can call it as a, a framework as well, which which actually which is very important to enhance the uh, protection and improve the security posture of the network as well. So it talks about majorly three types of security controls. Security controls, uh, I mean the measures. Okay, so there's a uh, physical controls. So uh, controls to prevent the physical access to our IT system, maybe in the data center or in the server premises or maybe in the workspace, workspace premises as well, like having security measures like security guard or locked door or ID card and everything. Second controls that it talks about is the technical control. This is where the actual, uh, you know, protection again, uh, protection to, uh, to uh, protection against the threats uh you know uh, any new uh, software or hardware solutions comes into the picture maybe a firewall appliances maybe antivirus software or maybe ips ids email security solutions or maybe any you know uh sandbox solutions uh, everything uh, all the security solutions or uh, controls comes into picture in the technical control Third is the administrative control. This is more about uh, you know security measures that consist of uh, policies, system, procedures uh, that has been uh, directed or enforced by the uh, management, CISOs or uh, SVP or senior management folks to the employees. Okay, maybe for uh, instructing user to label sensitive information as confidential or maybe setting the uh, password as at least nine character or 12 characters. So this becomes a, a policies or procedures, okay? Now, additionally, uh, other than these three major controls, there are uh, other ways as well, which, which makes it very, very important. First, uh, there are multiple types of, uh, you know, controls as well, or security layers, I would say. Let's start with the access measures uh, access control, I could say. So maybe authentication control, then biometric control, or uh, maybe VPN, or maybe it can be a workstation defenses as well. Workstation security controls, where we where we want to have all the all the computers or all the employee system need to be uh, need to have antivirus software, anti spy uh, anti spam software, or anti ransomware software. Usually, all of them are combined together on a single, single in the single software itself. We call it as endpoint protection, and um, uh, it that it could be another kind of a layer as well, which comes after it, which is data protection. So, data protection is all about uh, securing the data. Earlier, when we talk about when we we were talking about workstation, it was majorly about the computers. Then we talk about the data protection, where we talk about you know, uh, uh, encrypting our information, hashing the information, maintaining the integrity of it, and uh, um, uh, encrypting the backup, replication of traffic. I mean, you know, have maintaining a backup of the data as well. Then, of course, as we go ahead, we also have perimeter security like firewall, intrusion detection solution, intrusion prevention solution. So this all fall under different defenses. So. Defense in depth is basically a layered approach where, as I said, it, uh, we can have uh, on the center, we can have a data protection. Then we have workstation protection. Then we have perimeter defenses. Then we can have monitoring and prevention of the entire network altogether. 
So this this is the reason why it is called defensive depth. The reason why it is so important is because uh, in in the in the current trend where there are multiple threats, uh, where where there are there could even a single loophole can can uh, you know possibly uh, bring the entire network down and can lead us to compromise the network. Only single strategy, single measure control won't be enough. So we have to work in a defensive depth, and it's more like in military uh you know military style security as well so that that these are the defense in depth approach and that's a, that's the reason why it's so important yeah okay got it yeah so rajnish have you ever implemented defensive defense in depth in network uh well i mean i have uh implemented them uh, individually there in my experience there, there were uh there was a project where uh, i was involved in uh implementing the security controls and mm -hmm. um basically yeah i mean uh, i was involved in the defense and depth uh, project although the name of the project was something else uh we were already having some of the controls in the picture like perimeter defenses was already there, workstation defense was already there, uh, but there there was a need of an additional layer of security. So I was involved in deploying that. For example, there was a need to deploy the uh, uh, IDS solution for a, a web application in the DMZ environment. So I was involved in setting up the IDS solution to. Uh, to add an additional layer for the perimeter defenses for monitoring and prevention layer as well. Uh, so I, I was involved in the defense and depth project altogether and and also being involved in implementing different controls as well, like uh, more, more majorly on the technical controls. And on some level, I even worked with the administration administrative controls as well. I worked in uh, deploying the IDS solution. I worked in deploying the uh, EDR solutions in the network, including CrowdStrike. I even worked in installing, um, uh, you know, email security solutions like Proofpoint. So yeah, I, I worked with it. Yes. And how would you implement those? Uh, yeah. So uh, I mean, usually, as I said, so let's say if we talk about um you know firewall mm -hmm. so when we talk about implementing and my experience i have deployed the firewall uh which was palo alto firewall so basically when we talk about implementing palo alto firewall we we have gateway their hardware appliances and in order to manage all the firewall we have a panorama uh, and uh basically uh palo alto itself is, is the next generation firewall so we have a lot of features in it so uh, if you buy the Palo Alto firewall, it's it comes with the security policy, access control policy, basically. But if we really want to use all the features in it, then we should go for threat prevention license. Uh, we should have wildfire license as well. So threat prevention licenses create help you create security policies for uh, antivirus rules, anti-spyware rules. Uh, vulnerability protections and everything. So uh, it covers all the uh, all the all the features to defend against the uh, you know malwares or maybe threats as well. And uh, we can also create a zone protection profile under the Palo Alto to defend against the denial of service attack or any kind of flooding attack as well. So it's very very important on those contexts. So I worked in setting them in the high availability in the active active environment in the dmz network so uh, that was 5000 series uh, hardware and i even set i even worked in setting up the 820 series 800 series uh, Palo Alto firewall if i remember yeah so yeah i, I worked with that yeah so what do you think rajnish uh, what are the, some challenges while implementing defense in depth and how would you address them well, I mean, in my experience, uh, uh, although I haven't uh, worked in deploying the entire layers of defense in depth personally, but uh, 
to be very honest, I think the complexity is the only challenge because let's say we have an asset like DMZ server and we want to implement defense and depth for DMZ. Uh, by default, what, what most of the organization think about is implementing a web application firewall and then you know installing a firewall or uh, you know some threat prevention uh, solutions after that. So, or maybe network segmentation. Now, the problem in the def defense and depth is not really, it's the, the it's not a, a one shot that you install this and everything will be done. Because with defense and depth, you have to think about all the possible controls, including, as I said earlier, including physical control, the technical controls and administrative controls as well. So it makes the job of security professionals a slightly difficult. And if you think about, you know, uh, if I deploy all the defense in depth uh, layers, security layers, and then only I make it live, it would be very, very difficult. So uh, sometime in most of the situation, organization take a slight risk as well to uh, with, with at least 70% by implementing 70% of the security controls under the defense in depth, make their application live. And they actually, you know, consider few risks. They digest few risks and make sure, you know, it, it won't impact the network. And parallelly, they keep adding security controls to, to make it closer to 100%. So to address these challenges, uh, we have to have a risk-based approach. We have to prioritize the security measures. We have to implement security measures, security controls, which, which are very relevant. And these are all risk based. So if we have a risk, then uh, if you have a higher risk for certain kind of uh, threat or vulnerability, then we should, uh, you know, implement those security controls first on priority. And, you know, then we can take it ahead from there. So, yeah, that that's that's the that's the way, uh, you know, organization uh, plan to implement defense and depth. And these are some of the challenges. So, yeah. Okay, got it. So yeah, Rajesh, this is all I have. Thank you. All right. So thank you so much, Jamin. Thank you so much. Uh, so guys, now it's time for uh, getting some more information, some detailed information. So let me share my screen quickly. And uh, all right. Yeah. So so guys when you look for defense in depth okay there is no uh, you know standard document available although you have multiple images if you search on google so nist the organization as you can see here the national institute institute of uh, standard and technology by us department of commerce they have uh, defense in depth related documents available as well one of the very relevant document is a special publication 800 839 and 830 so this is where you can find uh the you know the entire framework has been uh explained about what all things you should really cover in defense and depth so i highly suggest you to look for this document to take a look about about defense and depth and what are the security controls suggested by nist and which frameworks basically fall under it. So you can see the it's, it's for multi-tier, multi-tiered risk management. There's tier one for organization view, tier two, tier three, and trust, trustworthiness, and everything has been explained very well in it. Okay. So I I highly suggest you to take a look at it. And I also share you the link in the description below. All right. So um this is me, Rajneesh Gupta with uh, Javin Pathak. Bye for now.